All right. All right. Well, time to get down to the Let's, short. We've, we've been delaying. We've been <laughs> <laughs> delaying the inevitable here. Let's uh, welcome to the good, bad, and the garbage. Uh, today we've we've got uh we've got a movie on board here. We've got fucking tiptoes from <laughs> two thousand and three. Uh, this movie. Uh, this is a movie. This was uh your choice, Bo. Why don't you you want to tell us what tiptoes is about? Like introduce us to this movie. Please, because I got confused towards the end. It's just oh my god. We'll we'll get to the end because that was just. I, it was a loop, but uh, yeah, I guess the reason we chose Tiptoes is uh, Quinn, weren't you one the one that said it in the group chat or something? And I was, I watched the trailer and I, I was don't like, know where, I don't remember where I heard of this gem, uh, but wherever it came from, I truly thank them for this experience because it was yeah. it was life changing. It was great. Base base <laughs> uh, summary is that Matthew McConaughey, a great actor, by the way. I just love him. Academy Award winning actor. And He's an excellent winner. actor. He's a great dude and a big fan of Texas, Texas football. Yes. But, uh, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> big Texas football fan. He uh, is dating a girl, but Matthew McConaughey doesn't alert his uh, girlfriend at the time, fiance, that his family are all small, vertically challenged people. And little people, Bo, you can say it. Little people is fine. When they say midgets, Matthew McConaughey takes offense. He goes, yeah, yeah. that's where you cross the line. Little people. Dwarf is dwarf. borderline. Suffers from dwarfism. He was fine with that. And uh, yeah, and then uh, Matthew McConaughey's girlfriend ends up being pregnant and then finds out that there's a a genetic deficiency is not the word i want to use but it's the only one that's there's coming to my mind there's a possibility that their child will also have dwarfism yeah and then, and then that's like yeah. i feel like everything after that is just a whirlwind of emotions and horror <laughs> and confusion so i think like we'll let the rest of the plot work out work itself out in the actual speaking of what happens what is going on with your thing quinn what are you doing He's just turning the video on and off here. Is this Sorry, one? I have on my phone, so I can't look at my notes. Oh. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. As long as we can hear you still. That's... You'll be able to hear me no matter what, even if I – is my video going out? Is that what's happening? Yeah, the video is, but that's yeah, – yeah. It's just – it's okay. like showing a beach picture. I don't know if that's Yeah, like... I get that too. It's like a beach icon. That might be my, like – I don't know profile picture it from is, somewhere. It's your profile pic, yeah. That's it does it feel like that. Oh, it looks like that. It would. It would be that. But kind of funny. Um, so all right. Yeah, just, this, I'm just gonna kick this off and say this movie's fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's gonna disagree with me, it's, uh, <laughs> like, shove it. Are you saying I that mean, it's so bad it's good? Peter Dinklage did quote and say that it was a beautiful. Oh, crap. This is why I wish I had my notes. Yeah, Peter Dinklage said, I think the original cut of this movie was beautiful. <laughs> Christ, Quinn, how long yes. does it take you to read a quote? Uh, well, I think he's just going to keep his notes. Are oh, you just going to stay like that? Yeah, I think that was... No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll jump back in here. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay. Just keep going. Is it... <laughs> Little... So this movie, written and directed by Matthew Bright, who hasn't made a movie since this oh, Jesus. <laughs> um and he didn't really I think he had like one semi like decent hit that was his first movie and they made a sequel to it and like two other ones between that and tiptoes but they're all shit anyways he wrote and directed this and he I think his original cut was like over two hours long and just a two and a half hours yeah two and a half hours and apparently just very different and Peter Dinklage when he said that he thought it was great he was talking about the original cut I think Matthew Bright. Yeah, the director's cut. Yeah, but Matthew Bright like fought with the producers a lot, or the producer's wife a lot, or something weird like that. So no, I, is this the one about Kate Beckinsale and her hat? A little bit, but that's like a that's a different story. Good tease though. Um, uh, no, I'm I had to look up multiple different sources to verify that because I, I thought it was a true, true story. So, 
basically, okay, a lot of big actors in this movie, right? I mean, you get three who would be Academy Award winning actors, and then Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale agreed to do this movie for minimum under the, like, the only circumstance was that she had to wear, she'd have to be allowed to wear her lucky hat while filming. And Matthew what? Bright said, yes, I agree. And then they started filming, and the producer's wife or something like that was like, I don't like that hat, make her take it off. And Matthew Bright was like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's the only reason she's here. That's a true story. That's a true story about this true movie. Story. <laughs> I actually like I know who Kate Beckinsale is, but like I have to actually picture her. Oh, it's so it's the main actress. For some reason I didn't like yeah. it's one of those names that I feel like I always hear, but I don't actually know who she is. Click. But that's my uh talked about she was in Click Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. We talked about it. I'm I'm just telling you, like you could tell me any actor or actress's name that's not like a straight up like major comedy actor or something, and I would like google them be like oh 100 percent know who you're talking about but i could not put face the name yeah. i'm horrible at that i am pretty good at like sports stuff for my yeah. brain it's, it's one of those things where maria is like you should just be like a sports talk person i'm like a i'm still not as intelligent as them about it but b like that is like a job that just does not interest me it's just getting angry at a microphone and bitching about you guys already do that but you don't yeah, have anybody yeah. listening to you i I will admit I get out of hand every once in a while in that chat. I saw I, you and Jason throw beer bottles at our wall yeah. inside. Okay. Um, oh. That was college. <laughs> uh, I like how you had to clarify that was inside. It'd be totally rational if it was outside. That was Throwing beer bottles yeah. outside, More totally rational. fine. Inside, out of line. And it was the Fail Mary game, and that was quite upsetting. That's fair. Okay, see you. You have to have the qualification that was a fail Mary game. And then I would, if you burnt down the house, I'd be like, yeah, no, it's totally okay. That would have been the cleanest that house would have ever been if we would have burnt it down. Anyways, <laughs> tangent. All right. <laughs> Hoona. <laughs> Fucking I digress. Movie. A little um, the story I was thinking of, though, maybe it's the same producer or what, but I, like, he just fought with the producers a lot on the set of this movie. And they basically took control they didn't like his original cut so they like took control of it and re-edited the entire movie into a rom-com apparently it wasn't originally supposed to be a rom-com and instead of two and a half hours it's an hour and a half and this is what we got and matthew bright was so pissed that he wanted his name taken off the screenplay and he wanted his name taken off the like as the director they didn't take his name off as being a director but they did take his name off <laughs> <laughs> the screenplay and the name they replaced him with was Bill Wiener. <laughs> Bill Wiener. Like, it's not a real person. They just had to put a different name on it. Um, so I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, so yeah, this is not the movie apparently that he wanted it to be. I don't know if his version would have been good. I guess Peter Dinklage liked it, but uh, I don't know. Peter Dinklage, like, is in this movie playing a, a weird French guy. Like, I don't, I, I question his. Okay, can we talk about the characters yes. and how yeah. they're so randomly assorted and they don't make sense to the movie at all. Peter yeah. Dinklage's character and that, the, the random hobo hippie chick they pick up make no sense to it's the story. It's Academy Award winning Patricia Arquette, sir. <laughs> Who cares? She doesn't add anything to this story. She what is, one of what is going on with them? Yeah, she is. Why? She's one of the craziest. I mean, in a movie full of crazy characters, she is one of the craziest. Bo, what were you gonna say? I w no, I was kind of on the same page that that whole. I don't like. I still don't understand what Peter Dinklage and his mistress's like purpose was in that entire show. Like, I or movie. Nothing. Like, I have no idea. Like, what the plot line? Like, what? It, like, was it just what was his name? Ralph, the twin brother, Gary Oldman. Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. R O L F E Rolf. Rolf. R O L F E. Yeah. Rolf. Rolf. Yeah. No, it's Rolf, but that's a whole, whatever. I don't even care anymore. But that's not good. It's just not good. like the, the only thing was like there was a dynamic between them where he was like you could tell there was uh I don't know some type of stress between them. But other than that, like he just there was just weird sex scenes <laughs> and that Rolf. 
<laughs> would walk into. Like that was the whole thing. Like I don't, I just don't understand what the hell that, and what purpose it played in the entire movie, other than maybe they wanted to get a legitimate little person and Peter Dinklage was like, we'll write you in to the script. <laughs> like, we'll yeah. Out. yeah. Well, it's like he randomly pulls a gun at one point and it's like, is and then he doesn't know something something's going to happen with that, but no. They no. <laughs> she's, she's beating the dude over the head with a, like a stiletto heel. Stiletto. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just holding the gun like, oh, I guess I don't need that. I could have just used a stiletto heel. <laughs> Yeah, he just tags along the whole time. I'm like, what are you doing here? Like, why are you here? <laughs> and then he gets to the bike. Be- nothing to the story. Since we're just on character development, best character development plot line we've watched in a movie yet was definitely her having like those standard girl from middle school, like 12, 13 year old, went to Mexico on like middle school sc- spring break, came back with the twisted up braided dread hair. Braid. Yeah, and then later in the movie, he has him himself. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's so weird. They like why does he have to speak with a terrible French accent the whole freaking It's movie. a horrible... And why I, did literally, he... I was going to say, I literally... Maria was walking behind me, and I was like, I cannot figure out where he's supposed to be from. And then they said something about... They, like, alluded to the war. And I don't know. I think it was World War One or something. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, it's got, I could probably figure it out now. Like, it's got to be, like, France, Britain, but it didn't sound British, whatever. And then literally two lines later, they mentioned something about him being French. It was the first time I had heard it. And I was – but that whole time I was like, is he Russian? Is he, like, like from Uzbekistan? Like, I have no idea what this it, accent it, is. Can we to be. say, why did they start the movie with them riding on these random <laughs> motorcycles you tell, in the desert? You can tell they really wanted to, like, show off the makeup of like Gary Oldman, Oldman in this movie because the first scene of the movie is just boom Gary Oldman riding on a fucking motorcycle as a little person like they just hit you right right away with it in the mouth it just... doesn't make sense yeah and then I, mean, I have like a million things I feel like I could talk about but I'll let you just run through them Matt and then if they are <laughs> let's, pop, let's I figure we just keep going down the line the characters like Quinn Qu- you said you want to go with the characters we talked about Carol a little bit well, that's Kate Beckinsale's character with, you know, she had to wear the lucky hat. Uh, I think Kate Beckinsale is a pretty decent actress, like in other things that I've seen her in. She's in the Underworld movies, Click, I mentioned. She's she's in good stuff. Um, she, like, I don't know if it was just the dialogue or what. Every line she has is terrible in this. It's terribly acted. Oh, there's, there's can we, is it time? That just, is it time? I mean, what? Is it time for the, the line of our entire podcast? You said that. You said 20 minutes in. You were like, Kate Beckinsale had the line of the movie. What is it? Go for it. I want to I do it verbatim. Okay. Line of the podcast. So you had a circle jerk with a bunch of little people. I would love to have seen that. Yeah. That was in the movie. I don't even remember hearing that, honestly. Uh, she, was, she was talking to to Matthew McConaughey, Stephen. About- After they had met her, her parents, or the parents? Yeah. Well, she asked him, like, have you ever slept with a little person before? And yeah. he was like, Have no. you ever had relations with a little person? Yeah. And he was and like, They were talking about in middle school, they would all sit and play, like, doctor and stuff. Oh, geez. And she's like, so you had a circle jerk with a bunch of little people. I would have loved to have seen that. That is a line written for a movie. Here's an, here's the next character thing. Like we'll just stay on it to try and keep this in some formulation. Yeah, keep going down character. Uh, I thought Gold. Matthew McConaughey was awesome. I liked him a lot. No, yeah, no. I literally wrote one of the first thing I I wrote was like, and this is before like as the later plot kind of moves on. I was like, how is Matthew McConaughey so endearing in every movie? Like the dude just every like, movie. You're like, dude, that guy. I, you know what? I'd have a beer with that guy. I would not just have a beer with him. I would be like, dude, let's just like go to a weird cab and do whatever happens, happens. Like <laughs> just <laughs> with, <circle jerk. laughs> with little people. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, Matthew McConaughey, like you're right. Like there are times where he's him and Kate Beckinsale are like talking to each other, and I'm going, What lines is Kate Beckinsale saying? Like she's just saying words that like no normal person would say. And I'm just like so but then Matthew McConaughey would talk and I'd be like, 
he's his normal self. You know, we'll, we'll get to the end where his character has these weird things that happen at the end of it that don't make sense. But other than that, like, he's, like, Matthew McConaughey is himself, and he's, he's pretty good. Like, you know, and he's good in this for the most part. Very believable. Even the, even the outlandish parts with the, the firefighting stuff, it's still, like, it doesn't oh. feel weird and awkward. Like, everything Kate Beckinsale does feels awkward. It, like, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't fit. It just feels like she's acting, not like she's playing a role. Let's just talk about the fact that Gary Oldman and Matthew McConaughey are supposed to be not brothers, twins. Legitimate twins. And like, not even just a short person, tall person thing like that. Is, is that even physically possible? I, I'm will, wondering if it, there's a dude, case of that. Did you, did you never watch Little People Big World That's it. on dude. TLC? There it is, Bo. I was just yes. going to say that. I like I, I'll admit, I've never right seen up. an episode, but Haley watches it a lot. And it's when still I on? It, like, what? It's still on? Yeah, they're making new episodes, apparently, even though I didn't, like, didn't they get divorced or something. I don't know. But, I think so. Well, so, anyway, there is a legit twin brothers in it. One's big and one's little. Yeah, no. So, it's literally, it's a real show. And then, I don't know what the family dynamic is anymore, but... It was like in high school, it was the mother and the father were both little people. Yeah. Whatever you want to dwarfs I'm trying to be nice, little people. And, little people. and they're they're so they then they had twins that were uh one was tall, normal sized, like I would say like even like six one, six two when it like was all said and done. The other one was a door, and then they had a daughter, right, Matt? After yeah. that, who was normal size? They said out of all their kids, only one was little. And yeah, and the two boys were both twins. Yeah, so it is possible, and and that and that leads me into like something else about this movie. Like, I'll I've, send you a picture, Quinn. I'll actually find a picture of the family and just send it to you real quick. You can see what we're okay. talking about. There were things with this movie that I legitimately kind of learned and didn't know about that I kind I of... I think that was supposed to be the point originally. I agree. I agree. And I, I appreciate that. But the way it was delivered in this movie just does not work. And that's like the thing. This is where... This has happened in some other movies that I, I feel like could be amazing but I feel like the producers get a hold of it. They cut it up to, to push some motive that they think is going to sell better, and they ruin the original message that di- and the vision the director had. Yeah, like, And it, it just makes you think, like, can we get those director cuts? Because I know a lot of movies do that now when they sell DVDs and, like, their home stuff, they give a director's cut, which is the one I always go to. Yeah, and say most, they're always the best. usually the director's cut is better. Uh, I will say, I, I, I'm not going to say that the director's cut of this movie is going to be great because, like, the guy who made Yeah, but at this, least we might, it'd be interesting to see the disparity between it, that and then would, what we got. It would very much be interesting because I don't think it was meant to be a rom-com. It seemed like the producers turned it into a rom-com probably because Matthew McConaughey, I think How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days was coming out that year. Like, rom-coms were big. Yep. But the guy yeah. that made this movie, like, said he made this movie because he thought it was the idea of little people fucking was hilarious like that's how he came up with the idea for this movie so i'm not saying that the original cut is good i'm not gonna say that i'm just gonna say yeah but you have me sold on that premise more than this so, oh my God. This, i guess this brings up two two different points like what we were just a oh, guy already forgot one because i'm just laughing too hard at the conversation of you just saying that it's just <laughs> the director thought would be too funny but i was gonna say i forgot by the way quinn if you're looking at the picture they also had another normal sized son that was like the youngest kid so yeah they had four That's kids wild. only one was a dwarf yeah or suffer from dwarfism for some reason it feels more organic that's offensive to be like suffered from dwarfism and not just you're a dwarf that is um, that ism at the end of it makes it sound more official. it goes from a label to a medical condition and it's totally different yeah <laughs> anyways that's so wild anyway <laughs> i cannot remember what i was gonna say oh oh no i can't <laughs> oh i was gonna say i 
first thing, when you brought up rom-com, I was going to try and interject at some point, but you guys were going off for a second. I don't understand what this movie could have possibly been other than like trying to be a rom-com. Like, what were you trying to do? Like a social... It was supposed to like enlighten people on the plight of little people. Is it? Like, was, was, I don't like know if that's the original intent. Because this guy only like, he did comedies. Like, was it just going to be a straight up comedy? Or a straight up drama? I think, okay, so the quote I always said was the one you was the one you said about he thought it was hilarious to think of little people fucking. But his his thought was to make it a raucous comedy about little people and hopefully shed some light on the like light of little people in the world and that all the 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 things they have to truly go through and the, the which hardships is, there. Which is stuff I learned. Like them as a baby like being in pain more often. Like I didn't know that. Yeah. So there is some actual legit stuff in this movie, but it's so cut up with crap that it's hard I mean, to it, decide. It seems like such a stretch to say that this is supposed to be some like social questioning like movie, like something that we're supposed to look like Avatar, like where you find like an underneath storyline that we're all supposed to really grasp and understand behind. I will. I was. I do have a second theory, and I'm okay. just gonna throw that out oh, there. Cool. Now, with the inf- this is just a brand new theory. I was thinking about especially considering the fact that this guy just thought that I don't even remember the director's name, whatever his name yeah, was. Matthew Bright. Little, Matthew Bright. Little, little people banging each other was hilarious. That maybe the director's <laughs> thought that Peter Dinklage loved was just like an actual porn fetish, like a two and a half hour, like maybe <laughs> Sally or whatever. Maybe thought it that's is. why it was beautiful. There's, what was the one? The more scenes with David Allen Greer just fucking a little person. <laughs> I was gonna say, and this is now I'm just like my brain is scattered with this fucking movie. It's ridiculous. But the <laughs> I don't even know his name. Uh, it was, I wrote it down in three different ways. I think it was either Padrishi, Ad- Adrishi, or Fudrishi. The big fucking like, I don't know if he's Israeli or something, dude. That Ralph walks into, or he walks into Ralph like. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, so the, the prostitute is she a prostitute? It kind of gave off that vibe. She's either that or just a very, a very loose woman. Whatever are you talking about, it is. Are you talking like, about? Are you talking about in her apartment or at the party? In the apartment. Both. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about the yeah, specifically the one in the apartment. The guy, the okay. big ass guy. Like there probably was a sex scene film between those two, and the like production whoever was that paid for this movie is like. Yeah, that's gonna have to get cut. And then, meanwhile, the director's cut is like he's just going home and stroking her off to that one. Like, yeah, like that. That's just, that's another thing where, okay, I'm not saying like a, a little person and like a I don't want to say normal size person, but like a, a dwarf fetish. and a non. You're going. It's called a fetish. I, I get. Yeah, like I get. Like people like that can't have a relationship. But that was such a weird scene where this guy is just straight up obsessed with her and then like w- like sees Ralph in the bedroom and freaks the fuck out like and then we just legitimately have a fight of like of this guy fighting these two little people and getting hit with a boombox like this is just re- it's just ridiculous <laughs> yeah. make me go like what is going on right now <laughs> like what I will is say watching? what is on this screen my last point about that entire scene, and I don't care if we keep talking about it, if we move on, that dude, whatever is Padrishi, Adrishi, Fudrishi, whatever his name actually was, he is single-handedly the worst fucking actor I've ever seen. Like, he is worse than, like, Tommy Wiseau in the room. He is horrible. Like, the way he's reading Wait, lines. he's in the room? No, I'm he's not in the room. He's just no, he's not in the room. I'm saying he's worse oh. than like the guy that was the main actor in the room. Like he is noticeably oh. that bad. Like he's like, oh, it's like he's okay. reading the lines off the inside of his palm, but he, it, like English is his fourth language. Like he's just sitting. <laughs> That's the last thing I have to say about that entire scene. But that scene did kill me. I was laughing so hard. I was like, this is the worst. <laughs> like. Yeah. All right. Well, let's address the right on the room. So you said this was going to be like a serious movie. I don't know how serious it can be when you have Gary Oldman starring as a dwarf 
where he's literally walking on his knees. That's how he was filmed in this movie. I was wondering that because it actually it looked at times it looked terrible and then at times it looked good. And I was like, I can't tell like because his shoulders were so broad that I was like, well, they put have... they put the prosthetics on his back to give him like a hump and stuff. Really? Okay. That's I was gonna say it looked just awkward, so that would make sense. And just just imagine being on set making this movie and just Gary Oldman's walking on his knees like the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well that's why they had him sitting quite a bit too. So then they would bury him in the couch or wherever he was <laughs> sitting it looks like and then have like cut, fake legs. Cut a hole in the back of the couch and he just peeked through like fucking Danny DeVito and it's always sunny, just cutting through the couch and they just have these fake legs in front of them like it just no because if you watch every scene where he's sitting his legs never move never yeah it's i guess i never paid attention yeah it just it looks i don't know it looks awful because like in that because he did an interview it's the thing i tweeted out where he goes you know he's like Oh, what a glorious role. And he, he goes on to talk about the makeup. Like, he thinks the makeup was innovative uh, or groundbreaking at the time. Walking like, on your I'm knees. like, dude, you're walking on your knees and they cut <laughs> a hole in a couch. Like, I don't know what you're talking no, about. We got, we got fucking Super oh, Mario Brothers running out Jurassic Park Yoshis. That's <laughs> just innovative. I, the, one of the parts I laughed really hard. I think it was after he got beat up and then he met Kate Beckinsale's character for the first time and he waddles over the couch and kind of just throws himself on the couch like a sack of potatoes. I laughed. It was so random. He just was like, it's like threw himself on the couch. It's so funny. So wait, man, you can keep going if you want, if you got another topic, but it sounds like we're talking about how, like you said something about how serious this movie was. And I have an honest question. At what point in this movie did you realize that this movie was literally taking itself serious? Because at first I was like, there's no way this movie is going to be serious. I just thought it was going to be funny or like, and not that it wasn't funny, but maybe not for the reasons they wanted. But like, I'll just tell you mine. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll go off yours. First five minutes, I thought this was like a PG movie. And then the girl comes over who I makes one other appearance in the other in the entire movie and talks to uh, Matthew McConaughey's dad or whatever. And the other girls go, you see your tits. I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> like that was first five minutes. I was like, are you. Kidding? Is that when they're at the, is that when they're at the big like shindig get together the thing? Little, it's literally like the, the conference. Beginning. The convention. Yeah. The little, the little people convention yeah yeah but yeah no just hearing them the girls say did you do you see your tits i was like so this movie isn't gonna be pg so where is this going now this is ridiculous wow okay so you you veered off a lot quicker than i did yeah i was thinking it was just a way like just ridiculous rom-com but where it kind of took a turn for me was after they got married and had the and then they had like the montage of them in the hospital and it just keeps going weirder and weirder. I feel like by that time they were cutting it up so much. It, they just didn't piece it together enough. But when Matthew McConaughey is literally saying, I don't want this to be my child. This isn't yeah, my child. That, yeah. That, I mean, that so was my, next level. My answer will be different. He's a but dwarf, let's Carol. Yeah. He's a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. say it. Like, say the word. Say it, say the word. Yeah, so my answer is... He wanted her to say midget, by the way, which would have been even <laughs> more ridiculous. Oh, my God. So that is where that movie takes an even crazy... So my answer is going to be sooner, but let's talk about this first. Like, Matthew McConaughey is a somewhat normal person that they treat like shit for some reason in this movie. Uh, like, saying he has anger problems or saying like he doesn't yeah, where accept did his that family which is really weird because like he's going to these conventions and he only shows that he loves his family but they say he really doesn't secretly for some dumb reason but then it just cuts to them in the hospital and he punches a hole in the wall at the hospital when he finds out that his son is has dwarfism <laughs> which was totally a possibility. Like, like you knew like you were the one who said you're the one who told Kate Beckinsale like 
our kid's probably going to have dwarfism. To be fair, he didn't tell her. Rolf. They got Rolf, pregnant. Well, she got pregnant. Then Rolf stormed in was like, he's my twin. And then she showed up to a random fucking field where he was working. And I literally wrote the quote down, said, everyone in your family is a midget. <laughs> That's literally what she said. They prefer, they, 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 they prefer, they prefer little person Carol. <laughs> and that's the thing too like he he like because you get the sense that he's like hiding his family from her but then she says like your brother showed up and he goes yeah so what which i was like okay so he isn't hiding family from her he doesn't care but then he gets pissed like that heel turn where he punches the wall is just insane to me like he just blows a gasket and then, well matt he did show some signs of anger when he yelled at that poor fat guy <laughs> during the oh, fire yeah. pin drills yeah that was i don't know like his character was just fucking up and down for me that was my biggest thing with him it's like sometimes he's a complete asshole sometimes he actually seems like a good person and i have no idea which one he's supposed to be um yeah well i think the end kind of right. put the nail in the coffin for what she was supposed to be well the ending was confusing to me because he shows up like yeah they have the yeah. argument where he's like say the word Say the word, say dwarfism. And then he's I'm a dwarf. He's, he calls himself a dwarf, even though like you're a normal yeah, that guy. That was great. He's like six one. <laughs> you're like you're you're Very a normal well put together guy. guy. <laughs> Don't call yourself a dwarf like your family is not whatever. Um, Technically Matthew McConaughey could be on our draft later. <laughs> he said he's a dwarf. Yeah, yeah. Short guy. He labeled himself, he declared himself a dwarf. <laughs> so you know, if he declared it, it's fine. Um, but then he shows up at the end and apologizes and is like, I want to be his father. And it's like, they just tell him no. <laughs> like, it just, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. Like he actually seemed to genuinely be ge like genuinely be like, I want to be his father. I'm sorry. I love you. And they, like, they just say like, no, you don't. And like, that's the end. Like I was, I, if, are we going to do like, that is the main underlying storyline. I think like the, whatever i don't even know if there's a plot line that carries the movie but like are we just gonna go on that right now because that's what i've been waiting for this whole time yeah. like this moment like if we're gonna just go in i'm ready to go in it right now there is no What's indication it? there is no indication in this movie at any point that i can tell that there is any romantic fucking involvement between Carol and Rolf, and all of a sudden there's one scene where she says goodbye or I'll see you later and kisses him on the lips. And I'm like, whoa, wait, are you joking? That was weird. I have rewound it three times. I'm like, did is it the lips or is it like one of the, like a European style, like cheek kiss, like right next to each other? No, on the lips. I'm like, okay, there's no way this movie is going this way. Like, they are subtle lovers that are going to fall in love. And yeah, that's how the movie ends up playing out in the end. But if, I, you, if you look at the description on Amazon Prime, it's a weird, it's, it says love triangle in the description. I'm like, reading that before I started, I'm like, love triangle? What? Yeah. No, there's no fucking love triangle. Nope, there's a love triangle. But not until about an hour and twenty minutes in. An, an hour, hour and a half long movie. movie. <laughs> an hour and a half long movie. Yeah, here's the IMDB one says the story of a peculiar love triangle involving two brothers. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, See, you told me that was the plot line before this movie. I'm actually like, if I knew that was the plot line before I watched it, I'd be like, no, not gonna watch it because I already know that one guy's gonna be a dwarf and the other guy's gonna be normal, and I know. But, like, the fact that that just came out of the blue, that entire plot line came out of the blue, was so ridiculous. And there was, me, I guess, me there was no indication the that plot they in all movie history. And they didn't – at what point did you guys see – did you ever see one point, even before the kissing on the lips? You wouldn't even say kissing on the lips, whatever. Maybe weird people do that. But, like, there was no indication that they were falling in love with each other in my eyes. Like, I did not see any of that. I saw – I saw like sympathy and empathy between both of them, but I never saw like tension. I guess. Yeah. That's a I think the I think the the first time I maybe thought it was 
I was going to say the wedding when she gets out of the car and goes, oh, I'm going to go talk to Rolf. But that's like kind of empathy, like what you're saying, like, oh, I just want to make sure he's okay. But like the cabin when he picks up the baby and goes downstairs and is like, oh, no, you go to sleep. I got this. I was like, are they like, is, you know, no, maybe he's just being a good uncle. Like, I don't know. You're right. It kind of comes out of nowhere. Like last line of the movie is you can kiss me. Or what does she say? She says something like you can kiss me if you want to. And then they kiss, and that's the end of the movie. Like, I, yeah, oh yeah, I did. I like, can't just, believe that was the end either. I was like, wait, it's done. It's over. That was it. Because I'll say it, like Rolf is kind of an asshole. Like, if people think Matthew McConaughey's character is an asshole in this movie, I think Rolf is kind of an asshole too. Like, he shows up late to the convention. He's like a dick to everyone. Uh, when the that prostitute, like dwarf lady with the, the beats up the guy with the boombox yeah, calls him he's like yelling at her that she's a bitch and like she can like hang up the phone or whatever like he seems like kind of an asshole so i don't know what the appeal is to him other than like they make him seem a little better right at the end but that was a weird little turn it was literally like i feel like the entire movie i don't know it wasn't obviously written for the last 20 minutes, but like everything that happened that was purposeful in the movie happened in the last 20 minutes. Other than like finding out that Matthew McConaughey is the one member in his family who's not a dwarf, like you literally could have just skipped it. And then last 20 minutes be like, his brother is. That's why I want to see the director's cut, even though I know it probably is a waste of my life but I just want to see what the heck was the vision for this. Cause this seems so chopped up. Like right. nothing seems cohesive. Well, all. and then like this, uh, what you were getting, I think at Matt before, I think it was you, maybe Quinn started it was the fact that they bring Matthew McConaughey back in the back and it, or like in the back of the movie at the very end. And he's got like his tail between his legs and he's coming in and you're like, wait a minute, you already made it seem like Gary Oldman was going to be the hero or Rolf was going to be the hero. And now you're bringing him back in. Like, is all of a sudden Rolf going to get his heart broken? And then Matthew McConaughey is going to be all of a sudden the hero of the movie. And then it's like, no, fuck Matthew. <laughs> like, It's still Rolf. Like, even though they were it trying to make it. it makes Matthew seem like he was disowning his kid. I, I don't accept that he's a dwarf. He's not mine. That's I what I got. And they still it. did that though. Like, I guess I, I yeah, didn't. I felt like that when he left. He's, he was like, let me say goodbye to him one last time. And then right. he just walks off. It was like, oh, so he's not going to be the father of this kid anymore? Yeah, he's I don't gonna know. He's going to go do his thing? She made it seem like she's going to just live at that cabin with Rolf. And she's like, this will work out because he's still in the family. Also, and you can come see him whenever the, you want. Like, where did the cabin come from? Like, wh- why are they all of a sudden out to this cabin? I mean, I think the cabin was just like Peter Dinklage in a house form. Like, it's just like, boop, here it is. And then nobody knows why it's And also, there. what's up with their characters just hating each other and they're just all of a sudden not being there anymore? Oh, they were uh, there at the end of the movie. No, um, the the Peter Dinklage and Patricia Arquette, yeah, they get in a huge fight and just leave. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I bought that. They just that, leave. All gone. Bye-bye. No I more characters. Really about that. This, 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 as quickly as they appear, just psh, they're gone. <laughs> like, they were literally in the first scene of the movie, and then they were gone. Yeah, it was. Uh, this movie was an hour and a half long, and I'm not going to lie. I watched it in three sittings of a half hour each because I was just <laughs> looking for a reason to just not watch it. Like After it's like, it's been a half hour, I'm like, Oh, and Miles needs his diaper change? Yeah, no, uh, let me just pause. All right, I'll go do that. Um, I will breastfeed Miles right now if yeah. I just don't have to watch this fucking movie. <laughs> like, it was, it was just, it was so rough. It was just not a lot made sense. And I was trying to do other things while I was just watching it. And I just ended up just staring at the screen, just with like open mouth, drooling, like, what the fuck is this? And then I was texting you guys how awful it was. I'm like, oh, it's the I only way I could get through it. I had no idea what to expect when you said that. I figured it was going to be ridiculous because, I mean, the concept is ridiculous. Like, there's no way this movie could have taken it seriously from the beginning. But when I watched it, I wanted to text you guys and be like, but I knew you both had already watched it and be like, this is legitimately the most 
fucking ridiculous <laughs> thing we've ever watched. <laughs> Yeah. It was... Wouldn't you like to know how they got the name Tiptoes? That's, I tried looking into it. Did you find anything? No, I couldn't find a thing. I was really curious. There were a couple yeah. things about this I was trying to find. Like, why did Matthew McConaughey agree to this? Why? That did... is a good. But wasn't it really early on? It was like 1993. 2003. Oh, fuck me. Then why did he do that? Yeah, he had <laughs> some big roles. He had. He had. <laughs> How to, how to Lose a Guy in 10 Days came out that same year, which, like, this is, this is peak Matthew McConaughey and rom-com. You know, like, he, he was set. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't need the work. And Gary I mean, how much money – how much money – what studio was greenlighting that movie and was like, your budget is enough to pay Matthew McConaughey anyways? Like, you know, it's like, there's no way. I would want – I don't know if you could search it up or if you know it off the top of your head. How much money did he make off this movie? Yeah, this is – I'm trying to look. So he made this in 2003. Sahara was 05. That one's not bad. I don't oh. mind O'Hara. It was Sahara. So he kind of, yeah, it's like probably a couple of years after this movie came out is when he made the hard switch from uh, like rom coms to trying to do dramas. But yeah, is I kind of I brought it up already, but one of the most Actually, no, I didn't bring up the part where I thought this movie kind of took, a, like, started taking itself a little too seriously, but the, um, maybe I'll wait for Bo to get back, but the, the dinner scene with the in-laws? I couldn't tell if they were trying to be funny there or yeah. if they were trying to be serious. That it was, was so all over the place. That was maybe not when I thought the movie was taking itself too seriously, but that was when I was very confused on, well, here's Bo. Yeah, but I was just saying the scene for me where I was very confused on how to take it was the dinner scene with the in-laws. Oh, yes. I think I know where you're going. Like, they're or acting. There's a specific moment during that, but keep going. It was just weird. Like, the whole time you're like, okay, so they're being weird because they're little. But then, no, it's just because they want to have a Jewish wedding. Like, I was... so. I, I had a question about that, though, because the way they played that off, they definitely made it seem like the father was more in tune with, like, what should and should not be said. And the mother clearly was, like, out of line. This. Obviously, yeah, and obviously, like, the relief that they – and I don't know, maybe that's where it's a little lost in translation is where the relief – off of uh, Kate Beckinsale or Carol's face came, but like it almost felt like they the mother would have said, "You guys realize you're a bunch of dwarfs," because like the mother oh, she they, definitely was gonna say that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think that I thought like it was a recovery thing, and maybe that's what you're saying, Matt. Is like you like it felt like the mother that's what she was planning on saving, but the father like came in and saved it by being like, "You're not Jewish." Which, I, I, how, do they, how do they not know they're Jewish just because they're short? I don't get it. Maybe they had, like, a, a Bible and not a Torah sitting on the entryway. But there was, like, no indication about, like, Jewish being a factor at all. Yeah, that was... That was I had no idea they were Jewish. Weird. No. And not them and not that the other family wasn't. Not Matthew McConaughey and Rolf's family weren't Jewish. Like, there was no indication yeah, it was just weird. Like, I couldn't tell if she just legit had a problem that they were dwarves. And, yeah, like you said, the dad just saved the day by recovering from it. Or if legit her problem the whole time was, we just need to have a Jewish wedding and I hope they're okay with it. Like, it's just weird that I can't really tell. It's, I don't and know. And it was, yeah, no, I agree. And it was bizarre because, like I said, when they first walked in, it seemed like they were, and obviously the, that was the entire joke. If it was a joke, it was like, oh, they're dwarfs and like, oh, but that's not actually the problem. But the problem was like, they never indicated anything about Judaism before that. So like it was, it, and then, and then the, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. I was getting distracted by Quinn yelling at clouds. Thanks, Quinn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Forget it. Just keep going on with your guys' statement. <laughs> I'm over. No, no, it's all right. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Did you, did you um, well, I, I was just looking at, like, Wikipedia for this thing, and I forgot that 
the whole reason this movie was made is because Matthew Bright was like neighbors with the creator of Cops and like told him about this script and then that guy like basically said I'm gonna make this movie like that's how this movie got made the creator of Cops is in like the legitimate show like the he reality was, show yeah like he just was like they they were like neighbors and it was like this is yeah I got this, this is an interesting fact but only because I have so much I have a podcast that I listen to and I forgot what it was called that I could just like mention on this podcast that say listen to that talks about how much of a scam cops and uh, live PD were not like a scam I mean it was reality but how like doctored up it was and like so I have like an Im- yeah, shut the fuck up, clouds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like an ingrained hate towards like cops and live PD because of like this podcast. So like the fact you just mentioned it, I was like, oh, the creator cops. I just want to. <laughs> that dude sucks. <laughs> that guy sucks. <laughs> um, and then I was going to say, it's also, so this movie was actually at Sundance. Like Sundance. Oh my God. You would normally think like would be good movies, but it's really it's for indie movies to go. So sometimes it's it's hit or miss with them, and this was a a big miss apparently. But um, Matthew Bright was asked to like go on stage and introduce the movie, and uh, apparently what he did is he went on stage and just bashed that that creator of Cops who got the movie made for him. That's the guy who like took control and had everything re-edited, John Langley. Uh, he just bashed him and slammed him for like 20 minutes because like they were airing not his version at Sundance. Like they were doing the 90 minute one that we just watched. And Matthew Bright was like, no, this thing sucks because this guy interfered. And it was apparently uh, quite the scene. But yeah, so Sundance, this movie was actually at Sundance in 2004. So that's kind of investor. <laughs> he literally bashed his investor. Yeah, like he just like yeah, he slew it. what is it? Uh, he instead launched into a scathing attack on the Langleys for their interference and slammed the finished product. So, so as, <laughs> maybe the, maybe the investor family were just the ones that were like, we just want to make fun of dwarf people. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this guy's <laughs> wife is the one who is like, uh, make Kate Beckinsale take that hat off. So. Also, did anybody search up this fact? I think they said it during the movie. 800,000 dwarfs in United States alone, or was it North America? It might have been North America. North America. But 800,000 seems... That a legit, is that a legit stat? I don't... They, that's what I was wondering. I have, yeah. like, no point of reference on that, so... How many little people live in North America. Yeah, this will be a good Google search. <laughs> hey, you also want to like search up where you can find like some loose uranium laying around and let's just let's just Google all the like hot yeah. terms or what's, whatever that are just what's getting... the age of consent in Savannah, Illinois? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more than Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> you might be right, <laughs> honestly. It's 18, but 15 if it's a relative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, Matt, you can't take that out and out of the podcast. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta say it. <laughs> I hope there's one random person from Savannah, Illinois, that does listen to this and they're just like, hey. I know, I know Jake listens like every once in a while, so it'd be funny if I just get a message from him and just be like, hey, like, hey just you can say so no. I know two cousins who got together at 16, okay? <laughs> and and their, kid, their kid is mostly normal. Uh, I can't, I can't find a stat. Apparently there's no good way to just search, find out how many dwarves or little people are in North America. We're going to have to take the movie at its word and just say that it's probably higher than 800,000 since this movie is 17 years old. <laughs> Any other closing thoughts or scenes or comments on this fucking movie? I kind of br- uh, brought up the ones I already talked about, like when Rolf catches 
uh, David Allen Greer just sleeping with his girlfriend in the middle of like a glass house in a giant party. Like, <laughs> that was a good one. All right. This dude's and like, what was the point other than the fact that like, oh, his original girlfriend who they said, I forgot what character was like, you guys are going to end up together anyways. Like she just keeps having sex with people. <laughs> like that's yeah. like, they're not dating. It's not like you're, he's like, I mean, obviously, if you'd probably be deterred if you felt like you had a emotional connection with somebody and they were having sex with somebody else, but she literally just keeps banging dudes. <laughs> like, it's, I think that storyline was run through pretty heavily. Yeah, it's also funny that they like pick Matthew McConaughey as like the normal, average person because it's like it's Matthew McConaughey. Like, it's one of the biggest swooners and like those baby blue eyes and like he's just ripped all the time he looks pretty good he's he the draw good in this movie. he's the draw he got to bring in people to see him but that that brings up people thought that peter dinklage should have played gary oldman's role well yeah they would have been closer in age gary oldman is 11 years older than matthew mcconaughey that's it i honestly would have guessed nah nah i would have guessed like 15 to 20 at least yeah I think but he like Matthew McConaughey aged well, and he was young even then. Gary Oldman still looks like his just his face, not even his body looks old. Yeah, his yeah. last name is literally Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> he just perpetually, he's just old all the time. He's just bit. He was born a thirty-five year old, and he has not come back since. <laughs> Yeah, he apparently, I think I saw this on, like, IMDb Trivia, so I guess take it for what it is. But he, like, had issues during filming. Like, he would break out and cry and just be, like, he felt bad that he was playing a little person. He was, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, should I be doing this? Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, that's probably a sign that you shouldn't be making this movie. But, um, (laughs) But yeah, they feel like people had to like console him and be like, no, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry. Because like Gary Oldman is in the Dark Knight trilogy. He's Commissioner Gordon. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. And that was only two years after this movie. Like, that's crazy. Those I'm movies, like, I wouldn't have thought that those movies were that close in time to each other. Like, I don't know why that blew my mind, but it kind of did. Um, so yeah. Uh, he went from the role of a lifetime to just Commissioner Gordon. Or by, yeah, I do I have love my that, love that in the trailer and in the role of a lifetime, Gary Oldman. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> role of a lifetime, all time one of the like worst trailers of all time. But I yeah. told Mar- Maria the plot and she like saw sections of it and she was like, Do you guys honestly think you should be doing this? And I'm like, What do you mean? Like, this is like the <laughs> what we do, we watch movies that might be so bad they might be good. And she's like, No, I mean, like, for your like public image should you be watching this movie <laughs> That's why i was debating about how we phrase the draft <laughs> yeah i was like think about this maria someone made this movie and they got away with it like nobody's been fair, though matthew mcconaughey is still popular a, he hasn't made a movie since and he tried having his name removed from it so That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, last note, last note I had, and then we can get to the draft is, uh, apparently this movie is solely responsible for Dinklage's role in Game of Thrones. The creators had, <laughs> have been recorded saying his ability to do a French accent meant they could do, they was, have no other. It wasn't even a good French accent so to me. you go. I mean, these are the same creators. Not like a parody of a French accent. Well, these yeah. are the same creators who, after they ran out of, like, the books and source material, like, just fucked up the show. So, I mean, who knows? And then they got fired from Star Wars after everyone hated the last season of Game of Thrones. So, I never watched it, so I have no idea. Well, it's good until the last season. I wanted to. Well, no, that's the thing. I really wanted to, and I was planning on it, and then everybody's like, the last season is the worst season ever, except for Justin, who, to be fair, is a complete moron. So when He, he also <laughs> really enjoys the need uh, for speed, or not the, the too fast, the fast, fast and, and furious movie. franchise. Need for speed. <laughs> that is a movie. They made that into a movie. So they did, yeah. Right? yeah, they did. 
Yeah, Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul from Breaking oh, yeah. Finding out that the last season is like the like ruins it, not ruins the whole entire show because obviously there's still whatever five six seasons before that. But like but I'm lost all motivation because I know I'll get attached to characters and be like I can see where this is going. Yeah, Matt. Yeah. Quick question: What's the worst movie like movie ending you've ever seen? Ending. And Quinn, you can answer it too, but obviously worst movie ending. Oh man, this is up there. I'm trying to. I'll tell you one that was surprising. I don't know if I would say it worse, but there was this Robert Pattinson movie that came out in like the late 2000s, you know, during his whole Twilight phase. Um, Has Robert it's Pattinson like this, been in a movie that's like, not late 2000s? Was it? That is Robert Dude, Pattinson. some of his new ones are really good. He's, he's a good right. actor now. But, like, so this movie... They're really good. Like, yeah. like, this movie is, like, a teen angsty, like, love story movie where, like, he yeah. falls in love with this girl and it changes his life or whatever. Is Again, he a vampire? Twilight, no. Um, his dad is played by Pierce Brosnan. Werewolf. And the last scene of the movie, he goes to his dad's mm-hmm. office to, like, tell him, like, basically, like, hey, I'm a changed person. I'm a better person now. Like, he's going to go tell his dad, like, I love you and thank you for everything you've done for me. And they're like, oh, your dad's not in his office right now, but you can go in there and wait. And he's like, okay, sounds good. And he goes in his office and the movie pans out and he's in the World Trade Center and oh. it's 9-11. I've seen that. I've, I never saw the movie. What is it called? Remember Me? No. Remember Me? Yeah, no. the whole movie is like a it's like a romantic movie, and then he ends up dying in nine yeah. eleven, right? Yeah, yeah. and you have no idea, watched. no idea that it takes place during nine eleven or around that time. Just all of a sudden, turns out his dad's office was in the World Trade Center, and he's there, and nine eleven happens, and he dies. So I don't know if that's worse, but that's one of the more shocking ones. Uh, that's Lucy, random. Lucy is kind of weird. Where she? I was really gonna say Lucy's the worst fucking movie ending I've ever seen in my life. That one's weird. Yeah, no. I think we've what? talked about that before, but I fucking hate that ending so bad. So yeah, Lucy, Wait, what? Lucy? Lucy's, I know this Lucy's is. the one with Scarlett Johansson where she gets uh, uh, something happens to her and she starts becoming smarter. Like she can use more of her brain power than other people. Oh yeah, yeah. I never saw it. She can yeah. so she can start move stuff and she starts becoming more and more like involved with technology and controlling technology. And at the end of the movie, she turns into a flash drive. It's, I think we've literally talked about it before, Matt, because it is – I remember watching that movie and being like, the visuals in this movie are fucking awesome. Like, if I was ever going to go to the movie theater and take shrooms or, like, L- Dude, whatever, anything. I got out. one. Just even smoke, whatever. That movie was unreal, like, in its visuals. And I was like, the plot line's pretty good. And then that – ending happens and for 10 minutes when she just the fucking guard like the melting like flash drive situation i was like i left the movie theater i was like that was the worst thing i've ever watched (laughs) why did i spend time for an hour and 30 minutes however long the movie was i was like this is dope like i would never be like this is a top movie to see ever but like very visually stimulating especially because i think that came out right when we were in the midst of college and like and we like were doing things <laughs> and uh, then i just remember the ending happening and being like that just that was the word like how did you make this like actually interesting movie and that is how you decided to end it yeah that one's not great it was not it wasn't just not great it was a <laughs> literally the <laughs> worst ending i can think of in my mind yeah all right dude can we all can we all agree tiptoes is definitely our brand like oh that yeah we was, never oh yeah it's we never garbage got, it's garbage yes yeah. it's garbage <laughs> you think it's garbage? Pretty, pretty garbage i don't know it was it was not enjoyable for me i did not enjoy, it didn't get to that level of so bad it's good it is garbage. I will say it's garbage, but only because if I feel like I call something as bad, then I'm like, that was fucking, like, so disappointingly terrible. Like, there's nothing enjoyable. I feel like when you say something is garbage, you can almost find enjoyment in it. And I found, like, some moments of, like, you had enough what the fucks to be like, this is garbage. Maybe I'm, like, adjusting the goalpost here a little bit. 
that's a decent it way. Felt like, it felt like an accident. It felt like a really awkwardly yeah. slow accident. And I'm yeah. just like, I can't look away, but I really should just turn this off. Right. I feel like I'm, like I said, I'm adjusting the goalposts. I'm saying like garbage isn't something that's just inherently horrible. All facets, the worst fucking thing we've watched type of thing. I'm saying like yeah. it is nothing about it made sense. No plot line made sense. There were useless characters, everything. And it wasn't like so bad. It was like the room that it's good, like enjoyable. I'll ever watch it again type of thing. But it is one of those things where I was like, this is so fucking terrible. Like I'm actually kind of finding moments of humor in it. Yeah. Cause I actually think of it the, like the opposite way where, if it's garbage, I don't think there's anything redeeming about it. But if it's bad, that just me like there maybe is. That's why I gave Hubie Halloween a bad instead of garbage because I'm like there are parts of it that I enjoyed. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but no, it does. It sounds like we're on the same page. Where I think it's just how you want to interpret the word. Yeah. Normally, before I would say like the word garbage means it is throw it in the garbage, never talk to it again. But how, this yeah. movie feels like it's a definition of garbage in the same way that like you almost find like a diamond, not a diamond because it's not like a. You might like go picking through your trash and you might find uh, like an old tire iron. <laughs> it hasn't like, hasn't expired yet. What was that? Some leftover pizza and it hasn't expired yet. And you're like, oh, yeah, perfect. Crust. Yeah. It's cold enough. It's cold enough that you can still eat it. <laughs> it's like yeah. pre-refrigerated pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say this is garbage and I would only give it a bad classification to tell people that it was actually made. <laughs> and not to watch the movie, just go watch the trailer and just know that it exists. Yeah, you pretty much only have to watch a trailer and then they're like, is this really as stupid as it looks? And you're like, yeah, that's literally like, it is that two and a half minute trailer is that trailer expounded upon for 90 minutes and that is the movie. Like, it is I, showed, I showed Justin in April this on Saturday and Justin's like, I think I saw this in theaters. <laughs> He's like, I legit think I saw this in theaters. I wouldn't be surprised. That seems like a Justin maneuver. And also, April was like, this looks like a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, is this a really a movie? I'm like, yep, and I watched it. <laughs> it was worth and watching. And then she proceeded to be like, why don't you guys watch good movies? And I'm like, that's not what we do, babe. You yeah. don't understand. Matt, Matt and I, Haley no, you're right, I don't movies. understand. <laughs> yeah. been, Matt and Haley watch good movies. We are here to watch the trash so we can weed it out for the people. We're doing got, like God's work. We're here for you. Yeah. We're here for you all, Jake Sweeney. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Baby Jason, I don't know who else watches this. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Hey, we're getting canceled. I think oh, they yeah. cut the sound at the end. I think this could have gone worse. <laughs> I think there could have been a way for us to get canceled. I really tried to refrain from the word, the M word. Yeah. <laughs> what? Fuck midgets? <laughs> if you need to explain your sexual fetishes, Quinn, there's really no plenty of forums to talk about it on. <laughs> I'm already in there. <laughs> Alright. You are the dude with the tag name, like the Q T pi, like letter Q, letter T, and then the symbol pi. <laughs> like, all right, all right, let's let's do this draft because I gotta go feed Miles. Can you explain this? We're doing uh, short people drafts in honor. Yeah, what, what's the best way to say this? Like best short people relative to their chosen profession. I think yeah, you just say short people. It's not yeah. like dwarves. It's just like yeah, short people. That's it. I'm second. Uh, who's going to win that? We're snaking. Oh, yeah. All right. Snake. All right, Matt, go. I know who I'm picking. Let me bring up my list here. Um, I'm going to go with Carlton Banks. That's what I thought you were saying. Is he that short? Sure? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> he's not, I mean, he's 5'6", but, like, the whole premise of that show is Will Smith just makes fun of him for being short all the is time. It, okay, I guess I haven't watched the show enough to, like, <laughs> Totally. Then I guess it's been a while. Understand it, but that's fine. Yeah. So uh, my pick, 
I mean, I, I think this one's just obvious, and I think that Quinn was be, would be smart enough to have taken this one. Maybe not you, Matt, after Carlton Baines. <laughs> Carlton. <laughs> I'm, excited. I'm excited for your other three picks. But, uh, you know, there's a, whole, there's a whole personality problem built around this guy, so I'm going Napoleon. Okay. Like it's, he is literally a personality like that that is if you're gonna mention a short guy in history napoleon bonaparte is what you're saying dude my picks are so much better than your picks you guys' picks suck so far your what first two picks napoleon? and those are what you you pull out napoleon i can respect i at least get it but dude, come on Wayne, go. Okay, I can't wait. All right. All right. First pick, Danny DeVito. Yeah, that was That's on my list. That's a good one. I, I'm only choosing him because I figured you guys had him. Yeah. Uh, on my I, list. No, that's a right, good one. Yeah. All right. So then snake draft back through. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go Vern Troyer. Yeah, I figured that one would go. Fair. I just fair. had mini me written down, but yeah. Is it, didn't he die? He's dead, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Him and uh, his Preston, the guy from Jackass. When no, Vern Troy is different. Who's the oh Mini Me? <laughs> yeah, <he's> Wee Man. <laughs> Wee Man. That's it. Wee Man. Yeah. You Wee can't, man. dude. I am gonna go. I'm gonna go athlete. I think I want an athlete because I feel like limited athletes here, and I'm kind of stuck. Football players are whatever. So stuck between one player and this other guy, but I'm going Spud Webb, five foot seven NBA dunk champion. That's Wait, how tall was Nate Robinson? Or uh, yeah, like five Nate. nine, five eight. Spud Webb is shorter. Oh, he was taller than Spud. I mean, okay. I was thinking about going. I I don't know if I should say it. Is anybody going? Nah, to also an NBA player. Uh, yeah, I had one on my list. I don't have any. Does his name rhyme with Bugsy Logs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, that's what I was thinking about going with. Yeah. I was <laughs> That was <laughs> who could that be? <laughs> <laughs> that was my next pick. <laughs> uh, Muggsy Bogues. Yes. Muggsy Bogues, mainly for Space Jam. That's just what I remember him for more than anything. I was just thinking, yeah. the same. <laughs> they're all in the hospital. That, he looked, that he, he's short, and everyone else is too tall, and their heads hit like the ceiling overlay and just fall down. So it's that. Yeah, it's pretty funny. He was also part of the era where the Charlotte Hornets had probably maybe the dopest jerseys. Yeah, dude. For like the NBA, like I, I, pinstripe NBA jerseys. The pinstripe ones. Better. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's those are awesome. Oh, yeah, I guess those are pretty sweet. sweet. Oh, no, it's you again, Matt, right? Yeah, yeah, it's me again. I'm uh, deciding between two other ones. I'm gonna go Simon Birch. I don't know who that is, so I got. Oh. It has less effect on than uh, than uh, I was hoping it would. Then maybe I'll have to change my pick. It's a no. Movie. You know, you're done. That's it. Oh wow. Okay. Simon Birch. Simon Birch. Get it? Just because I still don't know who this is. What is this? Is this a movie? It's a movie about oh a, a little person. He's a kid. And so uh, why didn't you just pick fucking Rolf? Because <laughs> I just didn't want to pick from like the movie we just watched. <laughs> All right, so wait, explain what it is. What is the movie? Because so I honestly... so it's about this kid who is he suffers from dwarfism, but it takes place in like the fifties, and his best friend is a, you know like oh, I'm sure quote, kids were real nice to him back then. Quote, exactly. Well, he's a quote unquote his best friend's a quote unquote like normal person, a size kid, and it's just about how Simon he doesn't fit in with anyone. People make fun of him, but then uh, at the end of the movie, he like kind of saves the day and becomes a little bit of a hero after uh, accidentally killing his best friend's mom. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> that he had a crush on. Yep. He had a crush on her. And oh, like, so it's like oh Stacy's mom gone wild. Like <laughs> the song Stacy's mom. I'll put, I'll put the trailer in the group chat because who yeah, knows? Maybe we'll watch that one day. <laughs> That's a, you I had me. I was like, oh, heartwarming. Said, what? I was like, oh, heartwarming. And then he 
killed the mom. So not so much. Yeah, it's it's kind of sad. But I was hoping, like, I watched it. I saw it as a kid. Haley had seen it. I thought maybe you guys had seen it, and it was going to have a little more impact. Never even heard of it. Literally never. Yeah, never even heard of it. All right. Bo, you're up. Um, so, but I think I'm going to put you in a body bag right now, Matt, because you just picked a movie character and you didn't pick uh, Frodo Baggins. Who yeah, that's, that's on my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I was trying to, like, be a little more funny with my Simon Birch pick, but then you yeah. – Frodo's the best. So it kind of fell a little flat, but Frodo is very much, like, yeah. Legit, man. Okay. So <laughs> legit. Yeah. No, I, was, I feel like I have to watch uh, Simon Birch, like, in your honor, <laughs> but I literally have no idea what it was till you said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, Frodo's Bro a good one. That was like, if I was being a little more serious with my list, I probably would have went with him. Number one overall. <laughs> All right. For my third pick, I'm choosing Lady Gaga. Is she that short? Five foot one. She's I'm actually tiny. kind of surprised. I thought she would have been like five, six, five, seven, five, eight. I thought she was too. And then I saw a real picture of her and I was like, holy shit, that's Lady Gaga. She's fucking tiny. So Quinn just saw a picture of her and was like, that chick's got to be 5'1". Yeah. <laughs> well, she was, standing with, she was standing with children, and she was shorter than the children. Like kids you know, taking 17. autographs. Fine. All right. Not amused. All right, then my last pick, Bridget the Midget. Why does that sound familiar, but I can't picture it? What show is that from? <laughs> what show is that? Yeah, that's a, it's it's a, a, show. It's a show. What? What's that? It's not? <sighs> Bridget Powers? Oh, God. Oh, she's literally a porn <laughs> star. <laughs> Are you joking? She's in tiptoes. <laughs> she's in tiptoes. You ju- was she really? Yeah. That's like what came up when I searched. No, mine she is the game of American pornographic actress. Well, that came up too, but then in like it underneath it says tiptoes. I really feel yep. like uh was she really in it? She probably was. Yeah, yeah. she has a cameo. She was also in SWAT. <laughs> I forgot about that show. I feel like Quinn just like incriminated us being like <laughs> Bridget the Midget and both men. Sounds Matt so and I familiar. Like, what she yeah, that, we know exactly who that girl is. What is she? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't more going with the tiptoes. The tiptoes was just a nice add in, but it was oh, is she just she's like is she super famous porn star? She's like the girlfriend that sleeps with David Allen Greer and the boombox guy. That's her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think I didn't bring it up the whole fucking time? This is my pick. Damn it. Yeah. I mean, Quinn, good for you for knowing exactly that there was a porn star in that movie. Well, it's because I was reading and I saw the name and then there's a porn star right next to it. <laughs> yeah. Have a, have a wife. All right. So I'm... Sorry for uh, having the best pick of the draft. Fuck. I'm like kind of stuck. I don't know which way to go. So one of the things I was going to say, but I don't... I don't think I'm going to say it because I think it'd be a little bit cheating. I was just going to say the city of Boston in general, because I don't know if you've ever been to Boston, but everybody's short, like noticeably short. You're like, why are all you so short? (laughs) (laughs) It's Irish people, dude. I'm I'm willing to take that pick if you guys are going to let me, but I feel like it's a little bit too much. You can... Do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. There's no rules to this draft, obviously. All right. Then I am going to take – I'm not going to go with the city of Boston. I feel like it's a little bit too rude. I'm going to go with uh, – switch it up. New After job. this whole fucking show. What? After this whole show, you feel like you're being rude to the city the of line. Boston. <laughs> the line. You're being rude. rude. No, I'm going to go with uh, Beethoven. You're going with like musical genius here. Musical genius still sampled today. Real short guy. Like we're not talking like short, like five seven short. We're not talking match short. You know, we're talking actually truly average, short. average height over here. Yeah, you should have started average, with that person in Boston. Boston. <laughs> Historical figures. Very average there, 
Yeah, well, they're important to history. I'm also not good at actors, so like it was Peter Dinklage, and then I don't know who else. Tom Cruise. I could have said Tom Cruise, but like I was, he was Matt, on my he's on my list of potentials. I got. Tom it seems like one of those things, though. It's right, like Matt, you got your fourth pick. Yep, yep. I I'm gonna go. This has a double double hit on it. I'm gonna go Martin Short. Ah, actor Martin Short. He's like five six. Plus shorts in his fucking name. I got that's got to count for double points. That's a good one, Martin Short. That's a good one. Yeah, that's fair. That's actually kind of funny. Is he actually <laughs> that short? Did you say? Did you yeah, say five, I think he's five six. He's five seven. Yeah, it's cool. Beethoven's five foot three. So just so you know, this says five four. <laughs> hey, I oh, had Richard the Midget, who is a famous midget pornographic star, and was also in Tiptoes. <laughs> it is a good pick. <laughs> you played your Come hand. On, I, I was going to say, the one that I forgot that I just remembered, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, he's short. He's I don't short. know how short he is, but he is. Have you seen pictures in pictures next to celebrities? Like, I feel yeah, like in the Irish movie, he's standing next to all those guys. He's never in glamour shots of, like, next to a celebrity. It's always, like, a close-up. So Pesci, like, you could have went with two then. What? Joe Pesci. Yeah, Joe Pesci's really the Irishman. Short. Joe Pesci is a short guy too. I think they're both five four. Isn't well, De Niro's pretty yeah. short too, isn't he? De Niro's like five ten. I like I googled Martin Scorsese height, and literally it came up with Martin Scorsese's height, Joe Pesci's height, and Robert De Niro's height. So, oh really? Yeah, <laughs> just probably because the yeah. Irish. I thought De Niro's like five eight. Not that that's even that short, but. Yeah, you can sort of die. Right. Well, yeah. honorable oh, mentions. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually, clicked the YouTube video. I uh. I had Tom Cruise, like someone brought up, uh, Dan DeVille Marshall. The only other one that d- I didn't have a pick, I was going to try to get funny with it, but you guys probably wouldn't have appreciated it. I was going to go with the Monstars, but pre-change, like before they got everyone's talent, <laughs> I was going to go with the Monstars. You should have that. That's that good. A really good one. <laughs> That's what I would have done really instead of Simon Birch since that, that one fell a little flat. That's all right. We're not as cultured as you. Yeah, that was a good one. I have two. I have two more honorable mentions. Herve Villa Chavez from that. Man with the Golden Gun. Don't oh know. yeah, he's well. He's in Fantasy Island too, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. The show. Yeah. Yep. And then the cast of The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, The Wizard of Oz was up there, like the Munchkin crew or whatever. Mm-hmm. Munchkin. Or you could be more like Willy Wonka, the guy that's like that plays um. The Oompa Loompas. I totally forgot about the Oompa Loompas. Yeah, there you go. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's difficult. The only ones that I had is honorable mentions were, uh, which I don't think I ever would have said because I don't really care about, like, Kevin Hart, obviously a cultural figure. Yeah, sure. And then, uh, but there's so many, like, actors that are, like, between 5'6 and 5'8, and it's like, that's not really that short. Like, you gotta go like super short, like a Danny DeVito short. Danny yeah. DeVito, Danny is, a good DeVito pick is like known for short. being short. Yeah. yeah. He's known for being weird. Yeah. Like Peter Dinklage <laughs> is like the token dwarf. Which so, I can't believe no one took Peter Dinklage. I think that it just didn't Easy. help. He was just prominent in this movie and Game of Thrones. He's almost too popular. Yeah. Although I do like my favorite role ever of his is uh, Death at a Funeral, or whatever it's called, the remake. Uh, I not didn't know they made that in a movie. It was a it was a movie, and then they remade it as a movie again. Oh, I'm thinking Death of a Salesman. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? It's been two movies. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll uh, maybe I'll throw a vote out there on this like i can't remember what the vote was on our last one so yeah i think i'll be better this time to be fair i'm pretty sure like you guys picked a bunch of irrelevant people in history and uh there's still a guy with the last name bonaparte that's still being taught in high school history classes not even elementary school history classes every day you gotta go with the crowd though like what what, what's the what's the crowd gonna care about are they gonna care about historical i actually picked real little people like Little people, and one of them started the movie we just did a podcast about. You picked a porn star, Quinn. 
Danny DeVito. You can phrase it out however you want. <laughs> Danny DeVito is going to carry you. An no, actress, that's... and she will be respected. Matt, when you title this podcast, don't even talk about tiptoes. Just say Quinn picks his favorite porn star. <laughs> Quinn's favorite porn star <laughs> is a little person. Yes. Discuss. <laughs> Quinn, talks, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quinn talks about his favorite porn storyline. <laughs> I wish one. I could say that without laughing. <laughs> but nothing else. No, um, whose pick is it next? Do we have a... Whose was Tiptoes? Was it yours, Ball? Mine was technically Tiptoes, yeah. I think it's you, Matt. No, because I did Hubie Halloween, so it's. Oh it no, turn? Hubie Halloween was technically supposed to be correct. My pick. Right. It is my turn was... because Quinn was Big Trouble Little China, and then yeah. Hubie Halloween was kind of like let's just do it because it's Halloween, yeah. and then it's Tipto. So you're right. It is my turn. All right. I don't have anything on the top of my head, so I'll pick something. All right, Cube. You're going to do Cube, so I don't want I'm to. Going I'm going to watch that trailer same. right now. Oh, shit. I got to go. <laughs> All right. I definitely have to go. I'll talk All to you right, guys later. Good night. Go take care of your kids. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> hey, guys. Take yeah, care. Yeah, bye. You too.